All right, so the other day, uh, a few people were talking about this book right here. And this is uh, Founding Flies, uh, 43 American Masters. This, there's, there's two books by Mike Vella that, that have sort of this name. It's like Tying the Founding Flies, and then this one. This is, this is a pretty thick book compared to the other one. And this has basically profiles of 43 fly tires that created flies that kind of changed fly tying. And uh, I haven't looked at this book in so long. When, somebody, when, when, the, when they brought it up the other day, I was like, oh yeah, I should check that book out again. And this came out in 2013, and I was flipping through it. And what do you know, within the first few pages, my friend John's in here. But this one, this is a Mary Orvis fly. This one's tied by John Bonacera. And um, when I saw this, I was like, you know, this is essentially a salmon fly. It, um, it's got a lot of salmon fly features. It's got the, a married wing. Yeah, it's only two materials, but you know, there's a married wing there. There's like a salmon fly style tail. We got eyes, we have a tail. It's, and, and it's even a blind eye. Because the, the way these flies worked is um, it, it wasn't an eye that they made with the gut, but it was a it was a long strand, maybe 12 inches. This is I was talking to John about it, and it's a it's a it's a piece that hangs out about 12 inches with a loop on it, and then they would would take the fly and that piece, that 12 inch piece of gut, and they would put it in these boxes. You've probably seen these boxes before, but you might not have seen them with this inside of it. Now, I knew what, the, what, this, what these tins were for, but I never knew what this was until John explained it. He said what they do is they wet this, and they put the flies with the gut in it. They put them all in here, and it keeps it, like, pliable because of this, 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 this moist, like, cloth in here. It's pretty interesting. But, uh, so I figured, you know, this is probably a good fly to tie as, as like, somebody's first salmon fly. There's a few other ones in here, too, that, that are good. Um, I mean, just this page is cool. This one right here is cool. This power machine belt, you've probably seen this one before. That's a great one to tie. But we're going to tie this one. We're going to tie it like John tied it right here. And uh, it's also got a hurl, too. Hurl in the front. Well, it's peacock hurl. It's not ostrich. So that's, that's, that's different. But it is a hurl, wrapped head. So it's pretty cool, and I wanted to give it a shot. And uh, we're gonna tie it on actually a John John Bonacera hook. This is a, a reworked hook. I'm not sure what he started with, but um, he reshaped it a little bit. He cut it down, and then he japanned it. So japanning is this black coating you see on here. Um, you have to put the coating on, and you have to put it in an oven for a while. Basically, it just bakes it on, and it's uh, it's really the perfect perfect hook for this. I think uh, it's a maybe this is a size four. I think this is probably a size four. Size four. I don't know. M maybe hairs. Maybe a hair bigger than a four. And we're gonna use. We're gonna start out. I got the book right next to me over here. So if you see me looking to the side, that's what I'm looking at. So we're going to start out with some yellow thread because the tail, uh, the tail, well the tail is partly yellow, but the tag is yellow. So we're going to start out with this Giorgio Benici. This is 12 0 And we're going to throw some wax on this. It's also got a flat gold. Tensile on the back. And now the gut, I'm not gonna put a 12 inch piece on, that's that's for sure. Uh, but I guess when they did put 12 inch pieces on, they probably twisted them up or they curled them up so that they were out of their way when they were tying. But the one I'm uh, this is I'm just gonna use a piece like this. And we're gonna tie it in right at about right about there. And to, to tie these, this this is this is actually just a, a sub substitute gut. This is just made out of mono. 
and there's a there's a, a good video, short video, maybe three and a half minutes of Jin Wu Lee showing how to make these. I can link it to it in the description. It's a really good video. That's what I use to, to, to make these. Very simple stuff. All you need is a a uh, a dubbing loop tool. The weighted one makes it easier. Uh, okay, so we since we're going to tie the gut in right about here somewhere, we're going to start the thread there. And basically the reason I do that is because it allows you to save some turns up. If we tie on over here, then we got all the turns in here, then we got the gut, then you're tying on the gut, so saves saves a good it saves a turn. And the way John's got it is he's starting the tag right around the the barb. This is what I'm using. This uh this French tinsel right here. The, it's it's a really small tag, extremely small. Okay, here's my scissors. Tie it on on our side. We go down and then we go back up. And then what you can do is just do a few loops just to get your bobbin out of the way. The less you do and the wider you do, the easier it'll be to take them out. And then we can just so it doesn't slip when we tie it on. We just put a drop of just a drop of super glue. That keeps it from slipping. It's not that that big. So now once you got that, yeah, that's okay. Then you hold it and then you can take these these big looping turns off. And then catch it in. So that just basically gets the bobbin out of the way. And then we'll cut it. And all I did was cut it the length of the, the floss. The other part of the tag essentially is that yellow floss, so it should go right about to the point. Yeah. So floss, 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 yes. So we're just using a single strand of of yellow floss. three turns in there. And if you want again you can put those big loops in. Really try and flatten out that floss if you can. And before you tie it off, give it a look. Yeah, it's okay. So again, you take these big loops out, and you can also take a couple of the turns that you used to tie it on out. Because you went back and then forward. And going back and then forward essentially ties in the floss with the floss. 
so you can save a couple a couple turns. All right, so the tail, you know, in this, I can't tell if he's got goose shoulder in there as the yellow part, or if he's got um, crest. It's tough to tell. We're going to use crest because um, then it becomes a little bit just another thing that makes it more like a salmon fly. If you want to, you know, I got a feeling it's not crust though. So if you don't want to use crust, you don't have to. But if you make this small little adjustment, it kind of becomes a comes more like a salmon fly. There's a little bit of white, but I think it'll be covered up. Let me get the next part of the tail in. Alright, next part of the tail is... Yeah, this uh, wood duck. Hard wood duck. And it's, you know, you don't need that much. You need, you need, you do need two feathers though, a left and a right. And I would say you need probably six, six or seven fibers from each side. And these things are curvy. It's just one of the issues with working with these things. The other issues is are very soft, so they can kind of fall apart on you if you're not careful. Half of what's holding them together is the, is the little skin part at the end. You, you, you cut that out and they could very easily fall apart. So once you do that, once you cut this off, if you want to, um, you just got to make sure you don't let go of them. That's the key. Get them the length that you want and don't let go. So John's got the, these the same same size, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna put it right there. We're never gonna let go of them. Yeah, that's good. The body, the body is a is like a rusty brown, and the only thing I have that that's the right color. Is this right? It's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be a wool. But uh, all I have is this right here, which is an antron. I think the color is, is, is great, but it is a synthetic. It's not, it's not a natural. But better off getting the color right, that's for sure. I'm going to go back. So something important, when you when you put the gut on, when you tie in the gut, the gut has to be tied in at the bottom. It's always tied in underneath. So what's going to happen is is that if you keep piling your material on the top, like I just did with the with the tail, then when you go and put the the um, the gut in. It's going to be, you have material on the top and then you have material on the bottom, but you have nothing here and nothing here. You see that? So it's going to create like a weird Z shape. So what you want to do is we need to offset that by tying in this body material on the bottom. It's going to be tricky, but we just get it on and then we'll, we'll just roll it down there. Yeah. Now, we want to make sure we pull it to exactly where we're going to put the, the gut in. So, and then we're going to make sure that we got it tied in. So that when we make that first turn, it's going to meet the yellow. Always good to look, you look from the top down. So you can see everything is in line. Okay. 
Make sure this is even. That's it. Okay, now we got that. Let's make sure this this tail is good. Yeah. Now the gut, what did I do? Did I lose it? So it's just a little bit frayed at the end, which is going to help me create a taper. So we grab it like this, and then we just do some some big loops to get it on there. Remember, it's got to be on the bottom. And then right, right, right where we think we're gonna we're gonna end the body, which is I think is, this is probably a good spot. Tie it off nice and nice and tight, and then go back. Now that first this first turn really matters. We want it to come up thin. So spread it out as best you can. Nice wool dubbing would be a lot easier. Now all I'm doing is I'm making sure your side is is good here. I'm also making sure you can't see through. Now, before we cut that off, we have it tied up. Before we cut it, though, we got to make sure everything is good here. That's good. Okay. Now, from here, I think I'll just switch the black. Probably should have, should have switched the black before the body. I think that's looking okay. So now, the next part is going to be, let's look at this here. Looks like it's going to be the eyes. So we're going to put two jungle cut guys, and they're going to go mm, three quarters of the way through. Probably they're going to touch that that black bar or the white somewhere right in there. And I have two eyes ready here. You want one from each side of the of the, uh, of the skin so that they're curved, and you want them to you want them to curve with the hook. So like this, see that? And we just we just get rid of this fluff here. Cut them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. We can always mess with these to get it to. Be in the right direction. The only thing that matters is that they're centered. If they're not centered, it doesn't work. So. Now the next thing is gonna be two hackles. A red and a black hackle. These are the two of them. So we got a we got a red and a black. Tie them on at the same time, but we're not gonna turn them at the same time. We're also not going to double them right now. We don't have to worry about that. So let's turn these on separately. We want to try and gut, get, we, we want a nice, like, full looking hackle. And we also want it to turn correctly here. We're going to go back over it with the thread so it's not like, you know, it, it, it needs to lay perfectly right away. That's why I didn't double it. And we're a little bit twisted. Do we want 
one more. Now the red, you probably need one less turn with the red because since it's brighter, it's going to stick out. Okay, what are we doing here? Are we gonna are we you gonna you gonna turn with me here, pal? Okay, there we go. I think that should do it. Catch it on the bottom. Fibers. So this is what we got, and um I want it. I want it to be. I don't want it to be like a driveway here. I want it to be back. So normally you would double them, but I didn't do that because I'm gonna come back with my thread. Be very careful how much you do. One turn in the wrong, you know, the wrong amount, and you could just flatten this thing out and it'll look like a streamer. So now we're gonna put the the upper wing on. I would consider this like the underwing, the eyes, and the, the, the overwing is going to be goose. Now the question also is, is that do we want this to go like a wet fly, like this, or the other way, which is traditionally what you see a lot of people do salmon flies in. I don't really do them that way. Um, I don't know, I just, I, I kind of like it when, if it falls the, the, the crest. That's kind of how I like wings, that they follow the crest. Just makes more sense to me. But, you know, whatever, you know. I do them, I do them the other way, too, sometimes. It's not, it's, but I, I, it's definitely not as much as I do it, you know, curved like this, like a wet fly. So I think that's how we're going to do this one. And John has it yellow on top. What is it? Yellow on top. Okay, so we got we got our two little slips here. All right, attach. There we go. That's it. That's one. Oh, this red's got an issue. I didn't notice it because I was on the inside. So it's tough to tell, but there's a little mark right there. So we're going to take this, this red off. We'll throw that away and we'll look at this. Uh, yeah, it does look like there's a problem here with this feather that I didn't notice. Sometimes there's a, I don't know what you want to call it, but like an imperfection in there. All right, so there's there's the two wings. Not n nothing much. I mean, you're talking about three or four of each color, probably more like three. And they're going to be on either side of the eyes, and they're probably going to be about the length of the eye. So, um, but the key is it's got to be on the side. If you don't put it on the side, it's going to be real difficult. Yeah, just make sure the length is okay, and make sure it's tied in in the right spot, and you should be okay. Nice and low. Nice and low, that should be, that should be good. So we're just gonna do a pinch and loop, but we're gonna make sure we don't catch in any of these. That can be difficult too, making sure you don't catch in the hackle. If you catch in a few, I mean, it's not a big deal, but you don't really want to. And then remember, you always got, as I've probably said a thousand times, you got to make sure that this thing is on top. 
before you let go of it. If you let go of it and this, these things aren't on top, you might as well just take your shoulder out again and just, just start making new ones. Yeah. Alright, so the way that looks right now, you don't have to, don't, don't worry about that part. As long as, as, as you like the, there's no crinkle in, in the actual wing part that you put on, which there isn't, and as long as the length is okay, which it is, don't worry about the look of it right now. Um, because you can fix that. We'll fix it in post. The, um, so, just make sure it's tied on real good. So it doesn't move. And, and everything else is, 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 is fixable. So let's get our... We have a razor blade. We do have a razor blade. Okay. okay. <sighs> Super glue on this thread. Yeah, I think, I think that head's gonna work. All right, uh, Hurl, it's Peacock, and um, you know it. You want it. You want a good one. I mean, I think that you want one that has, you know, a fairly thick curl. Because you're not going to get that many turns. So I'll get a little bit of super glue. So that the curl sticks. And we don't have to worry about it slipping. do that it needs to be basically dry almost dry because if not it's you're gonna just it'll collapse all the fibers when you try and turn it on there they'll just get wet so you want it to stick you're not trying to you're not trying to wet them I wonder how they did it with the 12 inch one. They probably curled it up or something to get it out of the way. That's it. Now on on John's he's got he's got it up pretty high. looking okay. Hackle's okay. 
body seems all right. I think using two crests was the right move here. That's my side. Looks the same. Yeah, this is cool. This is, uh, this is cool. Hackle seems alright. Mm, I probably could use a little bit more black in it, but I don't think it's bad. Might be tough to tell with my shirt. There's black in it, but. I think maybe another turn or two of black would have been good. I don't think a turn less of red would have been a good, a good idea because I think I'm just barely there. Yeah. All right. Mary Orvis uh, Grasshopper. It's um, it's a cool fly, and I think it's a good. It's a good uh, first fly, first salmon fly, if you want to try it out. I definitely think that, you know, you learn some things. Learn how to put a tail in if you use crest. And, uh, you know, you'd be able to marry a couple of wings there. You put some eyes on. I, I think this is, uh, this is a, this is a, this is a fun, fun first salmon fly, for sure. All right.